Hello everyone, welcome back to another video of our Dentistry Basics series. My name is Haley and I'm a fourth year dental student at the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and to be honest, I don't think anyone going through dental school really understands what dental boards is like. I would say there's two big puzzle pieces that encompass dental boards. First being the INDBE, the Integrated National Dental Boards Exam. Overall, I would say the INDBE has a reputation for being very challenging and students usually spend anywhere from one to three months prepping and take that either at the end of D3 year or some point across fourth year. But I have two videos about that on my channel already. We're gonna jump ahead to talk about the next big puzzle piece that makes up dental boards. ADEX is the overall dental exam committee and they have merged together two of the big components, CDCA and REB. And it's really great news for us because dental boards used to be based up by region and now almost every state is covered if you take this ADEX exam. Pretty much all of the screenshots that I'll be sharing in this video are directly from the ADEX CDCA REB website. This picture really nicely demonstrates that there are many components of the ADEX exam. First being the DSE OSCE, which is the Diagnostic Skills Exam, and OSCE just stands for Objective Structured Clinical Exam. So this is another test that you're gonna head to Prometric to take, and it's pretty similar to the INBDE in terms of content, but it has a reputation of being a little bit less rigorous because it's only 150 questions, and usually students don't study quite as long for this exam as they do for the INBDE. It's similar content because you're gonna have a lot of clinical scenarios and clinical decision making. There's also going to be patient cases that cascade in a similar way that you saw on the INBDE, except the format is sometimes different. There will be multiple choice questions, but there's also going to be matches and fill in the blank. Just like the INBDE, as long as your school has a clear due to take it, from my understanding, all students sign up to take the DSE OSCE as well as the INBDE at any point that they want before graduation. And again, that's through Prometric. Then the other parts of this picture are all clinical skills. And it's really taking you back to your days when you worked in the sim lab rather than on patients like you have been the past two years of dental school. There's gonna be multiple sections on this clinical exam using Typodont teeth and a mannequin. And your scores for these are totaled based on evaluations from a rubric. If you fail one single tooth, you fail the entire section. You can see here that one sub does not automatically fail you, but if you get three subs total, that counts as a fail. The other way to fail is with one single deficiency. It's important to note that not all criteria have an option for a sub. Some are either acceptable or deficiency, meaning you either pass or you don't. Overall, I would say students view this exam as very high stakes and stressful, mostly because of the hefty cost associated with it, which we'll talk about at the end of the video. The ADEX clinical licensing exams previously had some sections performed on live patients. However, that is no longer happening across most states. That's something that ASDA, American Student Dental Association, is really pushing and lobbying to keep because it's viewed as unethical to have boards administered on live patients. So that's something to keep your eyes and ears on as time goes on to be up to date on what's going on in the world of dental schools and licensing. But these mannequins are expected to be treated just like live patients. PPE, universal precautions, and all other treatment of live patients is expected during the exam. For example, if you drop an instrument, you're going to have to go tell the examiner that you dropped an instrument and you're going to need to get a clean one in order to continue working on your patient. Or if you touch something that's dirty with your gloves, you need to change out your gloves into clean ones. And you're expected to use a rubber dam during the endodontics portion of the exam. As for who's grading this exam, three dentists will grade each candidate's typodont. They're going to fill out the complete criteria sheet and in order for a deficiency or sub to count, two out of the three graders must write that in the evaluation sheet to try to keep things a little bit more fair. Score criteria sheets and manuals and even explanation videos are all available all the time on the CDCA's website for candidates to review. And they also host a Zoom session for candidates the night before the exam so that the candidates can ask any logistical questions and just help to alleviate some of that 
unnecessary stress and I actually found this Zoom to be very helpful and just clear up any misconceptions that myself or my classmates may have had. My overall experience with the examiners was very positive. I felt that they were supportive and trying to keep the day as low stress as possible given that they know we're all running on pretty high adrenaline and pretty nervous about this exam. At least at my dental school, and I'm pretty sure across the board, you're either given materials to practice, different type of dent teeth for prosthodontics, for endo, for restorative, or you might have to purchase them on the side just depending on how each school is structured, but you are given a practice type it on and practice teeth to prepare for this exam. Here is what they recommend your day of exam schedule is that you prepare for. However, you definitely can be done earlier. I know I was because I didn't take the full amount of time. You do wanna expect to get there fairly early, at least an hour before. Most of us did arrive between 6.30 and 6.45 a.m. to set up for that 8 a.m. start time. You are completely self-paced, meaning that you can spend as long on each section as you would like as long as you're under the overall time limit. But once you complete one section, the floor examiner will sign off on your sheet what time you finished, and you cannot go back to that section again. If you finish section one early, it doesn't mean that you get extra time in section two. There are time limits for each component of the exam. In the fall, this is a recent change if you've taken ADEX in the past, they included periodontics as part of the fall mannequin exam exam now and probably going forward for at least a few more years, and that's removing 12 sites of subgingival calculus. The other two things tested in the fall will be endodontics, which is an anterior full root canal and a posterior molar access. And then the last section of the fall is prosthodontics, which is going to be an anterior crown prep and a posterior bridge prep. And the order is actually pros, endo, and then you finish the day with period. In the spring is kind of a different ball game. These are special type on teeth with simulated caries, but I have heard that not all of the teeth are the same. Some have much deeper decay than others, and it's totally by chance what you're going to end up getting. The restorative portion is testing a premolar class 2 and an anterior class 3 on an incisor, and these are with composite restorations. This does seem to be graded a little bit more quickly than the fall because they've already graded your prep on the spot and they just have to send off to grade the restorative portion. The fall section usually does take about three weeks to get graded. So they notify you that your scores are posted, you log in, and you fail the section. Then what? Retakes are going to be administered by the dental schools through the CDCA rep again, and they're going to tell each student how to sign up for the specific section that they need to retake. For us, we have our academic calendar about a year in advance, which included the original date for the ADEX exam, and then it also included the retake date because it's very common for students to have to redo a section. Just from word of mouth across my school and others, about one third of the students end up having to retake a section. It's important to note that if you fail one tooth of a section, you don't just redo that one tooth, you have to redo the entire section. For example, if you fail because of lingual reduction on your anterior crown, you're going to be expected to redo that entire section, including the anterior crown and the whole bridge. If you fail a portion of the anterior endo, you'll also have to redo the posterior endo. A retake of one single section across the clinical exams as well as the DSE is included in your overall package fee. If you end up failing more than one section, there is an additional quite large fee. I know what you might be thinking, this test sounds stressful. And you're right, guess what? It's not cheap either. Something they don't really talk about enough is the expense of this exam. A lot of students are not prepared for this extra amount of money they're gonna have to spend in order to complete their dental training. These are just the 2023 fees and honestly, they go up every year. IMBDE that I mentioned at the beginning of the video is $845. Common study plans are either three months or six months. The three month plan through IMBDE bootcamp, $299 and the six month plan is $399. Obviously those are optional. And then when it comes to ADEX, it is a whopping $2,800. One retake might be included, but you're still gonna get hit with $150 supplies fee for that retake. After that, each section you retake is $1,296. If you have to retake a section after three attempts and you still have not passed, you have to retake the entire series over again as a brand new candidate. All your passes that you may have had are wiped and you have to pay the full exam fee again and start from the beginning. So the minimum cost without any study materials and assuming you pass everything the first time is $3,645. 
and it's only going to go up from there. Since I said it's realistic to expect that you might fail at least one section, it's going to be helpful when planning your D4 budget to expect around $4,000 to take all of these boards exams. Okay, you made it through the exams, you passed, you're finishing up all of your requirements at dental school. Now what? You've passed all your boards, you're graduating, how do you even get a license? Each state has its own licensing requirements and I'm going to walk you through the process of getting a dental license in the next Dentistry Basics video once I'm just a little bit closer to graduation and taking those final steps to apply. Please give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful hearing about how dental boards works and what it's going to be like when you're a fourth year dental student. If you want to see what day-to-day -day life is like as a fourth year dental student here at Michigan, be sure to check out the vlogs on my channel. I have tons of other videos if you're in your pre-dental stages or early dental school stages to help you with studying and getting through dental school. So be sure to subscribe to my channel and like this video for similar content in the future.